Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of Homemade and today we are going to be making an ooey gooey pecan upside down cinnamon roll. Yes, this cinnamon roll is everything you all, but right now we're going to just use our one and a half cups of evaporated milk and this evaporated milk is the key to getting that soft consistency that we are looking for in our dough. We're going to use one half cups of just regular granulated sugar. We are going to use one tablespoon of honey. We're going to use four and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, one egg at room temperature, and we're also going to use one package of fast-acting yeast. Now, this water that we have, it is one half cup of water, and this water is just to proof our yeast. I like to always proof my yeast before I start working with my dough because if our yeast is not active, then all of our ingredients have basically just been flushed down the drain. So I want to put our water in the microwave, let it go for 45 seconds, bring it up to the right temp, and then come back and start to proof our yeast. We're going to go ahead, put in our water, and we're going to set our timer for 45 seconds. And what I like to do is I just like to hit 30 seconds twice, and it puts it on a minute. And then once it gets down to those 15 seconds, I go ahead and take it out. And okay, so we've heated our water in the microwave for about 45 seconds. It is the right temperature. It's not too hot, and it's not too cold. So to go ahead and activate our yeast, We'll open up our packet of yeast. I'll set that to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pour in our sugar and our honey. And we're just going to keep mixing that until that sugar and that honey dissolves a little more. Once we get that mixed in, we're going to let this sit for about 10 or 15 minutes just so the yeast can activate. And once we come back, I'll show you how to tell whether or not your yeast is activated. Now it is time for us to start working on our dough. Now someone asked the question, why do I still proof instant yeast? And again, sometimes you can get bad yeast you all it doesn't matter if it's instant it does, can be bad so i like to make sure again before i start using all of my products and all of my ingredients that my yeast is active so i can show you how to know if your yeast is actually active so what will happen is after a while and if you can see it is a foam that has formed on top of our yeast so I'm just going to take my spatula and if you can see, once I pull it back, that foam that is under there, that's how you know if your yeast is active. I like to start off with my whisk attachment when I'm doing the dough. Go ahead, put in about half of my flour. I'm not going to put it all in at one time yet. I'm going to go ahead and put in about half of my Imperial. Now I'm gonna, and I'm going to go ahead and add in my milk. And I'm going to add in my egg. And I go ahead and put the rest of my flour. But I mix it down a little bit. Put the rest of my flour. Put a little more milk in. I'm going to dump the rest of that in. Put my imperial in, cut my mixer up a little bit, and pour the rest of my milk in. Go ahead and cut that off. And I'm about to take my whisk attachment off at this time to put in my kneading attachment. Cleaning my hands. Now, before I cut my mixer back on, I'm also going to scrape down, just out of habit, the 
sides of my bowl. And I'm going to cut this on and I'm going to let it go for about 10 minutes on high speed. And once the dough starts to gather around my attachment, then I know that it's ready. I do not want to over mix this dough. So we're back. We've been kneading our dough for about 10 minutes. And as you can see, like I said, it will be a soft, elastic dough so don't worry if your dough is really soft we're going to knead it a little more at this point before we put it in our bowl to do our rise we're going to just take it and pour our dough out And as you can see, it is spreading, but don't worry about that. That is perfectly fine. We are going to bring it all together. So I like to put a little flour on top of the dough and also on top of my hand. And at this stage, I'll use my bench scraper just to fold the dough on top of itself. And this just helps keep the dough from sticking to your work area. And also, if you make sure that your surface is sanitized, make sure that it is clean. So you're just going to keep folding the dough over on top of itself. As you can see, the bench scraper also prevents it from sticking completely to the surface and we want this dough to stay as soft as possible we do not want a hard dough because the harder your dough the tougher your bread remember this is a soft cinnamon roll very soft cinnamon roll Going to knead it with my hand for a quick second before I put it into my grease bowl to rise. Now we're able to basically pick it up and you know move it around. And I'm still using my bitch scraper, but I'm also putting my other hand in here just to kind of get it to moving a little more. Again, we don't want to overwork this. So even though it is still sticking a little bit, I am going to go ahead and put it in my bowl for my first rise. And this bowl, it is a greased bowl. And I just grease my bowl with regular vegetable shortening and this is just to keep the dough from sticking to the bowl while it rises. I'm going to let this rise for about 20 to 30 minutes in a warm place and my warm place is my oven. What I do is I cut my oven on for about five or 10 minutes when I'm getting ready to start prepping my dough and that way my oven is warm. It is a warm place, it's not hot but it's a warm place. I cover it up and I put it in there and set my timer. So we're gonna go ahead, put this dough into our oven, let it rise for about 20 to 30 minutes, come back and start prepping our cinnamon rolls. Our dough is continuing to rise, but it's almost at that uh, 30 minute mark. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start prepping our topping that's going to go in the bottom of our pan with our pecans brown sugar and butter so again this is a simple 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 caramel topping recipe in this bowl as you can see i've melted one stick of real butter now i know you hear me say i don't use butter a lot but i did use real butter for this step and we are going to put one cup of brown sugar 
we are going to put one tablespoon of vanilla and I'm going to add this vanilla. And we are also going to use one full cup of Cairo syrup. So what we want to do is mix this in really, really, really well. And for this, we are not going to actually add our pecans into this mixture. We're going to mix this up, spread it in our pan, and then we're going to add our pecans on top of it. If at this stage you want to use a hand mixer, you are more than welcome. It actually makes the process go a little faster, but make sure that that butter, sugar, and corn syrup is mixed in really well because, again, this is going to be our caramel topping. As you all can see, I'm just using a regular pan, and I'm going to spray my parchment paper. Actually, I'm going to spray the bottom of my pan, and then I'm going to also come back and spray my parchment paper just with some nonstick cooking spray. And to get my parchment paper to sit flush, inside my pan i did cut the sides a little bit just to make it sit in there so we want to just make sure we stir that up really 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 well we're just going to pour it into our pan we're going to use our rubber spatula to spread this out and also to make sure that we get all of it out of our bowl. So just spread that out evenly. And now we're going to take our pecans and we're just going to Spread them out in there. And this is about a cup and a half of just regular chopped pecans. Nothing special about them. They're just coarsely chopped pecans. And if you can notice, I am going to reserve a few of them because I'm going to actually put those inside of the cinnamon rolls so once we have this ready we're going to go ahead clean this area up bring our dough out and start kneading it and cutting our cinnamon rolls so we're back i've taken my dough out of the oven i've pushed all the air out of it and i'm just going to take my spatula dump my dough out Now remember, this is a soft dough. I am going to use my bench scraper to help me out, make sure nothing sticks. I'm just going to knead that dough just a little bit, just kind of get it all worked in. And you can see how pliable this dough is. It is very soft. It's not a hard dough. So that is really good. That's going to give us that soft consistency when it comes to our cinnamon rolls. And I promise you all, this recipe is so good. I also like to use the same recipe, less sugar um, for my rolls, unless I'm doing a sweet roll. What I'm about to do now is get ready to roll my dough out. And the last thing I want to do is stick. So we're just gonna roll it out.
to a large rectangle. And also you do want to make sure again that your dough is not sticking to your surface because once you get ready to start rolling it, the last thing you want is for it to be stuck. And you kind of want it to be as uniform as you can possibly get it. You know, you don't want one side really thin and one side really thick. You want to kind of even it out as much as possible. Now that we have our dough rolled out, and as you can see, I just have a big rectangle on my table. We're getting ready to put our filling inside of the dough. And right here, all I have, I just have a softened stick of margarine. Now, I do use butter if... You know, I choose to, but I'm just going to use margarine. And it again, you see, it is soft. It's not hard, meaning I can just take my knife, my butter knife, and I can spread it evenly over the dough. And you want to be careful also if you're doing it this way because you don't want to put too many tears in your dough. So you just put enough everywhere in every place. And then I'm going to use my hand to finish spreading it out. Just to make sure it's even across my dough. So now that our dough is covered, we are going to put in our brown sugar and cinnamon mixture. Now in this bowl, I have a cup and a half of brown sugar and I like a lot of cinnamon in my cinnamon rolls, I do. So in here, I have four tablespoons of cinnamon. If you don't want that much cinnamon, you don't have to put that much. Typically about two tablespoons should do you. But again, I love the cinnamon. I love just smelling it. So I'm going to spread this out evenly. Make sure you just have some in every area because you're going to actually spread it. And again, you want to get as close to the edge as you possibly can without it spilling over. And now I'm just going to take some pecans and just kind of spread them throughout. Now, you don't want to make, you don't want to have these all in one area because, again, you don't want to tear your dough. Okay, so now that we have our filling in, it's time for us to start rolling our dough. And we are going to roll it towards us. It makes it so much simpler and easier when you roll the dough towards you as opposed to rolling it away from you. So all I'm going to do just to make sure that it's not stuck, and you also want to be careful that, you know, as you're leaning over, you're not putting your clothes on top of the dough. So all you're going to do, you're just going to roll it as uniform as you can so i'm starting at one end in the rolling and i'm making sure i go all the way across before i come back so roll it and you want to make sure that you're actually kind of rolling it to where you'll have a lot of rolls in your cinnamon roll and i just like to just keep my bench scraper right there to 
make sure that once I roll it and if I feel like it's sticking, I just take my bench scraper and I just kind of push it, you know, to make sure. Roll it. And you just want to make sure that you've rolled it all the way up. Now, these are going to be oversized cinnamon rolls. So if I just count it off in my pan, three per roll. So I would just say three, six, nine, twelve. I'm going to actually look to get about 12 cinnamon rolls in here. So, if I can just measure them off, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I like to do that before I start cutting because it just gives me a better idea of how I'm cutting. So, I just cut that and... I set them in there just like that. You don't have to make them touch because once they rise again, they're going to touch anyway and even as they bake. And you can see these are some pretty healthy size cinnamon rolls. So again, you see that they're not touching, but once they do the second rise, they should actually expand a little more. And also, once they start to cook, they are going to expand. So we're not going to worry about that. I like to kind of keep them spread out, and that's just, that's just to give them enough room. Now, my oven has cooled off a little bit, so I'm going to hit... I bake just to go ahead and let them uh, let the oven heat up just a tad bit. And before I put my cinnamon rolls in, I'm going to go ahead and cover them with a towel and get ready to put them back in the oven just to do a second rise. And this typically takes about 10 or 15 minutes. I like to just let them rise for about 10 or 15 minutes and then come back, just cut my oven on while they're in there, take the towel off and let them cook. Our cinnamon rolls have been cooking in the oven for about 25 minutes. They smell so good, you all. The smell is... Oh my goodness, I couldn't even describe it to you. But we're going to go ahead, take them out, and we're going to put them on our cooling towel, let them cool for a few minutes before we flip them over because we do want that caramel to kind of settle a little bit but not settle too much. So I'm going to go ahead, take them out of the oven.
Oh my goodness, look you all. Oh my goodness. You all, these look and smell amazing. So again, we have our caramel that is in between each roll. It is there. We're going to let that sit for about three or four minutes, maybe five, not longer. We're going to take our sheet pan, lay it on top of our cinnamon rolls once they cooled enough, and then we're going to flip them out. Afterwards, we're going to put a little drizzle on them, and we are going to taste this amazingness because it smells so good. It is time to flip our rolls. So they've been cooling for about five minutes. Again, we don't want to let them cool too long because we still want to be able to see that caramel topping once we flip our rolls over. So I have my mitts on and the pan is still hot. So you do want to make sure that you have your mitts. I'm going to just lay my sheet pan over. And I'm going to make sure that I'm really careful. I'm going to go ahead and lift this off. And oh... M G, you all <gasps> look at there. Look at all of that gooeyness. Oh my goodness! Look, those are our pecan upside down cinnamon rolls. Now I went ahead and I had some extra cream cheese frosting left over. And if you don't want to do this step, skip it. It's totally fine. I do have a recipe for cream cheese frosting on my channel. But if you just want to do a regular drizzle, you just take some powdered sugar and you take a little bit of milk. You don't want it to be so thin. So you want to just gradually add your milk in maybe like a tablespoon at a time. And you're just going to put it in a piping bag, Ziploc bag, whatever you have. So, I had a little mishap, but that is perfectly fine. Because if you want to cover your cinnamon roll in the icing completely, that is fine. But I like to just take my icing and just go across my rolls. It just gives it that beautiful... Look. And you all, these smell so good. These are our pecan upside down cinnamon rolls. I'm going to get a saucer and just go ahead and taste one. I think I'll grab this one because it has a lot of pecan. Oh my goodness, you all. And I just want to let you all see how nice that looks and how soft it is. It is so soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it. The only thing that could possibly make this cinnamon roll better is if we would have toasted the pecans. This is so good. You have to try it. You all, it is so easy. 
And it is so good. Mm, mm, mm. These were our pecan upside down cinnamon rolls. And I'm just going to hold that up again because you can see all that caramel that's on there along with that drizzle. This recipe was so simple. Anyone can make it. Anyone can make it. Just follow the steps to make sure that your yeast does rise, that it is proof. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed with this recipe. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our channel if you want to keep seeing our easy homemade recipes. Keep it simple, be yourself, and life can be so much easier. Thank you. Until next time.